now know if, I don't know if her campaign leaked the story or whatever happened, but this person reports with Cornell West abandoning the Green Party line to try to run for president of the United States as an independent. 2016 candidate Jill Stein has stepped up to fill the void and filed FEC paperwork to run in 2024. And then there is the receipt there, statement of candidacy. This looks like, wow, this is just filed the 7th. Jill Stein in Massachusetts. Jill Stein for president. And there's the P.O. box. So for those that may want to be supporting her, there's where it's listed the P.O. box. Anyway, um, here, so we're going to play the video first, and then we're going to read her statement. But let's read the caption of the tweet, and this is Dr. Jill Stein herself. The political system is broken. Over 60% of us now say the two-party establishment has failed us, and we need a party that serves the people. I'm running for president to offer a better choice for the people. Join us. Jill Stein, 2024.com. Let's put a pro-worker, anti-war, climate emergency agenda front and center in this election and on the ballot across the country. People are, are tired of being thrown under the bus by wealthy elites and their bought politicians. Tired of living paycheck to paycheck, struggling to pay the rent, locked into student debt and medical debt. With child poverty doubling, rising disease and dis diseases of despair, and growing hopelessness, the ruling party that got us into this mess aren't getting us out. Both parties are squandering trillions up on the endless war machine, fueling conflict around the world, while tens of millions here at home lack food, housing, and health care. The two parties of war and Wall Street are bought and paid for. The Democrats have portrayed their promises for working people, youth, and the climate again and again, while Republicans don't even make such promises in, their, in the first place. Both establishment parties are a danger to our democracy, expanding censorship, criminalizing protests, throwing co comp competitors off the ballot, suppressing debate, rigging their primaries, and using their power to serve their wealthy donors instead of the people. Now, I'm going to pause here because I do want to get back to that, but I don't want to step too much over the video just in case that's just a written version of her speech here. So let's listen to the video, then I'll get back to the, uh, the reading of the, uh, of the thread. Let's listen. People are tired of being thrown under the bus by wealthy elites and their bought politicians. Tired of living paycheck to paycheck, struggling to pay the rent, locked in student debt and medical debt, child poverty doubling, rising diseases of despair, growing hopelessness. The political system is broken. The two Wall Street parties are bought and paid for. Over 60% of us now say the bipartisan establishments failed us, and we need a party that serves the people. I'm Jill Stein, and I'm running for president to offer that choice for the people outside of the failed two-party system. We'll put solutions to the crises we face, crushing inequality, endless war, and climate collapse, and we'll put these front and center in this election and on the ballot across the country. The ruling parties that got us into this mess aren't getting us out. Both parties are squandering trillions on the endless war machine, fueling conflict around the world, while tens of millions here at home lack food, housing, healthcare. Democrats have betrayed their promises for working people youth and the climate again and again, while Republicans don't even make such promises in the first place. And both parties are a danger to our democracy, expanding censorship, criminalizing protest, throwing competitors off the ballot, suppressing debates, rigging their primaries, 
So forget the pundits and the attack dogs who tell you to ignore your misery and just keep voting for those who caused it in the first place. Change won't come from the ruling elites. It comes from we the people. And when we stand together, we can create living wage jobs for all Americans. We can guarantee an economic bill of rights with the right to a job, to health care, to housing, to food, education, and more. We can abolish student debt, medical debt. We can create a Green New Deal with millions of jobs to fight climate collapse and protect Mother Earth. And we can ensure our constitutional rights and freedoms and justice for all. We can end the endless wars and rampant militarism and use diplomacy and international law instead to end violence, occupation, and apartheid. We do have the power and we can use it in this election to start building an America and a world that works for all of us. Go to jillstein2024.com and join us. So there goes Jill, Dr. Jill Stein's uh, announcement video. And as I thought, as I was reading the thread, I'm like, oh, this feels like this is the speech that's given. And I didn't watch the video because I wanted to go uh, in blind to get a blind reaction. So this is, she just wrote out her uh, speech that we, uh, that I was reading earlier and that we just watched. And then she also has a technical uh, press release in, for immediate release Thursday the 9th. Jill Stein announces 2024 uh, Green Party pr uh, presidential run. And here goes. Jill Stein announced today that she is seeking the Green Party nomination for president of the United States. Stein is a Harvard-educated doctor, a pioneering environmental a health advocate and a longtime organizer for people planted in peace says Stein of her mission in 2024 quote, I'm running for president to offer a better choice for the people outside the failed two, uh, two party system will put a pro worker anti-war climate emergency agenda front and center in this election and on the ballot in November. Stein's run comes at an unprecedented moment in modern electoral politics with an unsettled electoral electorate and a commanding majority of Americans expressing a desire for a presidential candidate outside of the duopoly. Let me pause here because it feels like I'm getting backed up with a lot of what I wanted to say about this. And I want to catch up before I continue on here. And that is so let's let's kind of go back. Before Marianne Williamson announced, the discussion in a lot of uh, left-leaning radical circles was like, of course, we're not supporting Joe Biden. And it, it was always a, it was a pie in the sky sort of thing. <laughs> we wish we had Jill Stein again, or Jill Stein would tweet about uh, Joe Biden in the race and, and or, or the system or the duopoly. And it would always be, I wish you would run again, Jill Stein. Always in the thread. And I, I remember saying this in one of the interviews we did with her. I was telling her that, excuse me. So moving along in the story, Marianne Williamson enters the way, race. And of course, RBN, we are totally against that. And we showed that from the jump, completely, in our opinion, estimation, destroying her candidacy or making it effectively incapable of moving anywhere, going anywhere than where it is now. And then RFK Jr. joins the race. And it takes the oxygen. I would say it would take 75% of the oxygen out of the Marianne Williamson campaign. Then Cornell West enters the race. And now Marianne Williamson has been completely put outside of the room of candidates. Nobody talking about her. When Cornell West enters a race, Nick and I many times literally had conversations similar, if not exactly, 
we couldn't think of a candidate that would be better than Dr. Jill Stein until we came across Cornell West. Like, wow, we could not think of a better candidate until we thought of Cornell West. Check the boxes, Harvard, check the boxes, accepted by the establishment, brings them on uh, uh, their cable new network, news networks all the time. Check the box. What wake up people who never vote would vote for would 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 join his movement or his candidacy and vote for the first time. Lupe Fiasco, for example, was one. He said, "This will be the first and only time I vote." Tweeted that out when Cornell West announced Cornell West moves to the Green Party. And I'm sorry, let me back make sure I make this statement before he moves to the Green Party. We do a show, the post duopoly show, and this is one of our third or fourth episodes. We do a post duopoly show, and that announcement that he's running under the People's Party was made that same day. So we we all and I remember it, Keaton and I was pushing this hard. It was like, nah, he's like. We need to focus on pressuring him to draw, leave the People's Party and join the Green Party. And literally within less than 48 hours, that was the news what we were reporting that he was leaving. So we, we were happy in a very happy place. Some even suggested who should be Cornell West's running mate, Jill Stein. Jill Stein, I'm, I'm not running. She has a lot on her plate. She had a lot of other things going on. Maybe we'll get to that. She had a lot of other things going on including issues that went that was still carried over from the 2016 campaign. Yeah, 2016 campaign. And I thought that would be a great ticket to have Cornell West and Dr. Jill Stein. I'm not sure I still I disagree with that even now that a ticket where Dr. Jill Stein and Cornell West would be great, but at least now I'm thinking Dr. Jill Stein needs to be at the top of the ticket ticket considering the things that cornell west have did the, the decisions he has made he needs to be the second in command not the he needs to be robin not the batman his name recognition will help because dr jill stein's name recognition is here but cornell west's name recognition is slightly above because his name recognition rings truer or larger not truer larger in the black community at least so he would help in that sense so I think this is still a possibility. Now, my first choice, though, would be for her to tap her 2016 VP running mate, Ajamu Baraka. Because I'm trying to think the Green Party needs to pull, it needs to find a way of pulling Black voters to the Green Party. That's why I think Cornell West, he has a larger name recognition. But policy-wise... For me, my first choice would be a Jamu Baraka or even a Margaret Kimberly. I don't know if she would consider running. I don't know if, if a Jamu would consider running. But Dr. Jill Stein, that would be this would be a great a great way to move the party forward if Cornell West was to come back as a VP running mate and or, or I'm sorry, not and or but or a Jamu Baraka is added. Or maybe a name that I, for whatever reason, I can't even think of right now. Because as, and the reason I'm saying all of this is to come back to this letter now. Because where it says here, we're in a special time here. Where did it mention? Did, it, did I skip over it? Right here. Stein's run comes at an unprecedented moment in modern electoral politics. This is what Ajamu Baraka, this is what Shama Sawant, this is what Margaret Kimberly. It didn't feel like Cornell West understood the moment we in. Like, oh, it's just me another time. No, it's not. This is a very unique moment where we have so many very earth shattering sort of events happening all at one time. With all those things happening, the establishment providing two turds on a platter to fix all of these converging, life-altering, converging sort of uh, events. And these events could be life-altering by themselves. Now we're adding them all together. I mean, to go from the pandemic, to go to inflation, to now we're talking about war with Russia, war with China, war in Israel. This is an unprecedented time. So let's get back. And so I, I agree with what she says here. Let's get back here. Jill uh, Stein's run comes at an unprecedented moment in modern electoral politics with an unsettled electorate and a commanding majority of Americans expressing a desire for a presidential candidate outside of the duopoly. According to a recent Gallup poll, quote, 63% of U.S. adults currently agree 
with the statement that the Republican and Democratic parties do such a poor job of representing American people that a third party major a third major party is needed. This represents a 70 percent point increase from a year ago, and it is the highest since Gallup first asked the question back in 2000. And 23. So we have an historic poll in 20 plus years, 21 years to be exact, just lends itself to the point that I was making before that this is an unprecedented time that we're in. Quote, with the war machine swallowing trillions of dollars as working people struggle to survive and the climate crisis accelerate, it's time to offer voters a viable alternative to the bought off politicians who have thrown them under the bus bus she i'm sorry stein said quote the ruling parties that got us into this mess aren't getting us out both democrats and republicans have betrayed us their promises again and again political insiders always smear outsiders like us and try to shame voters who want better choices stein said quote but without freedom of choice in elections there is no democracy it's time to offer the american people a real choice on their ballot, independent of the failed establishment, end quote. And I'm just realizing this has, 2024 is shaping up to be election where we have the most legitimate choices in the general election. Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Jill Stein on the Green Party, that's a legitimate, that's 40 plus states that will be on, 40 plus. Now, now let's talk a little bit about RFK Jr. and Cornell West and why both of them are running independent, but they're both not running, they're both not the same. It's not the same independent candidates. Cornell West is running an independent candidacy with no money or very little money, so little you might as well describe it as no money. You know how when you have $15 in the bank account, somebody says, do you got money? Are you, how much money? I'm broke. You don't say $15. So Cornell West's campaign is a campaign independent with no money, which means if he's polling at 8%, 8% of zero is what? Why it's different from an independent part of camp candidacy of RFK is because RFK is actually raising millions of dollars. RFK Jr. is actually getting money. And RFK Jr. polling at 25% in the general election, haven't seen numbers like that from a third-party candidacy since Ross Perot. That means he's going to get even more people to back him, even corporate, even court. I don't think he's sworn off corporate money. And the way he's going so hard at genocidal, uh, advocating for genocidal Israel, he's likely to get donors. So that's why it's RFK independent candidacy is a lot different than Cornell West's independent candidacy. Now I say all of that to get back to what I to, to the to the to what's on the screen and what I was saying. 2024 is shaping up to where we have the most legitimate candidates on the ballot, and that's four. I do not include Cornell West for the reason I just said. Eight percent polling at eight percent in the general election. Eight percent of zero is what RFK Jr., Jill Stein, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden, or whoever they insert in place of Joe Biden. So I can't remember a time where we had legitimate choices where there could quite possibly be people uh, people who have millions of dollars or able the ability of raising millions of dollars and ha or have an apparatus like the case of Jill Stein and the Green Party to get on 35, 40 plus ballots. I don't see how any way Joe Biden is going to win the election, especially with the latest polling showing that he, in four of six states, he is losing to Donald Trump outside of the margin of error. There's another state where he's losing to Donald Trump, but it's within the margin of error. But let's get back to the letter here. I'm sorry, the tweet. Dr. Jill Stein unveiled a campaign website at JillStein2024.com laying out the campaign's vision to solve the key crises of our time, crushing inequality, endless wars, and climate collapse. Quote, when we stand together, we can provide living wages, living wage jobs for all Americans, she said, uh, Stein said, quote, we can guarantee a economic bill of rights with the right to a job, health care, housing, food, education and more. We can abolish student debt and medical debt. We can create a Green New Deal with millions of jobs to 
fight the climate crisis and protect Mother Earth, we can ensure the constitutional rights, freedoms, and justice for all. We can end endless wars and rampant militarism. We can use diplomacy and international law to end violence, occupation, and apartheid. We can build real democracy in to, uh, to empower the people. We do have the power, and we can use it in this election to start building an America and a world that works for all of us. And that is her... Um, press release uh let's see what some people are saying here let's see what sort of reaction um she's getting oh wow nick is the first one uh to react here uh please interview psl and that's the party for socialism and liberation presidential candidate claudia de la cruz about her and other anti-war activists protest today in black rock new york city headquarters janice that is something we can absolutely uh attempt to re or not attempt to reach out to her to to get her on for that so thank you janice and thank you for the super chat super sticker there abiding 71 all right so let's get back to the reaction and uh, rbn brother nick's reaction is up first we are in the early stages of a multi-party era. Reject the duopoly, embrace what's happening. And this, I absolutely love this. And this is this is sort of what I was saying earlier, that this is the first time we're going to have more than just three. Because we had Ross Perot, and he was a legitimate person. Now it's four. And the way RFK Jr. is polling... And his ability to raise money makes him a legitimate contender. And and they're finally admitting this on cable news. I might play the clip. It's not a related story. It's not from a related story. But I may play the clip where they talk about it. Um, and then we have Jill Stein by way of the what the Green Party's apparatus has built up if she wins the nomination. 40 plus ballots. So Nick is right. We're entering into a post-duopoly era and where it's a multi-party era and it can only get better after this because how can we go backwards after the people see, wow, we have four legitimate choices here. And the way I would put them on the spectrum is, of course, Jill Stein is way out in the left. Um, then I guess you would have RFK Jr., then Trump and, and Trump and Biden are really overlapping. And I would say RFK Jr. is closer to them than he is to Dr. Jill uh, Stein. But another thing, another ramification of this news from Dr. Jill Stein is Marianne Williamson is going to become even more invisible, if that's even possible. If that's even possible, Marianne Williamson is going to be is going to become even more invisible than she already is. And I think there is a clip. I won't I won't uh, I won't give too much. Let me just bring up the clip. Um, There is a clip. Or let me say it this way. Uh, she goes on. She goes on rising, of course. Um, and I think the segment she does, and I'm only going off the title. I haven't watched the segment. Is DNC is rigged. Bernie was right, says 2024 challenger. So she reaches out to her, her friend, Brianna Joy Gray, to get some help here. Um, because I am com being completely... But she is completely now going to be completely invisible if she wasn't already. It's going to even be worse than it was. Made to Bernie Sanders. I had long dismissed his complaints about the rigged Democratic Party primary system. But you know what? He was right. And I apologize. For 
Ernie, voter suppression, New Hampshire candidate suppression, ballot access and debate suppression. None. If you're among the majority of Democrats who want to change, please go to Dean24.com and help us create change. Dean Phillips also came for Biden following Tuesday's countrywide elections. He wrote, want evidence of the disconnect between the D.C. political industrial complex and X and the exhausted majority of Americans? In an exit poll of Ohioans who voted to make abortion and cannabis legal, only 25 percent said that Joe Biden should run for re-election. Well, this uh, has to be um, a welcome admission in, in your view as a former Bernie Sanders staffer to see someone admit that he was right about the suppression? No, figuring this out only now when it personally benefits you is just an admission of how selfish, craven, um, indifferent to the millions of people across the country who were joined together in a movement for universal health care, a living wage, a housing as a human right, um, fighting for their actual survival for those two candidacies of Bernie Sanders. He didn't care enough to inquire as to why so many people would have been motivated to make a socialist the second most viable candidate in the race. Someone at, who came out of nowhere to almost beat Hillary Clinton and get 44% uh, of the vote in 2016. But I guess now that it impacts him, he's figured it out. He's seen the light. God bless. <laughs> I, I would just take the win, but we're different people. Um, How is it a win? It isn't, it's very easy. When people start agreeing no. with you, you say, no, it's thank very, you, it's you're very right. It's easy to compliment so, someone when they're... I was waiting for that. <laughs> when I first saw that, I was like, oh, that's freaking hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's freaking hilarious. But um, Dean Phillips here is... I guess making the point, not I guess, he's like you see you heard what Brianna said, is making the point that yeah, Bernie Sanders was right. Dean uh this the Dems are are rigging uh this election. And uh Robbie is like, <laughs> I, I guess you won't take the win. Cause I, I guess Robbie's saying Dean Phillips is, is saying, yeah, he's he's saying, yeah, you're right, Bernie Sanders, but Bree takes a little bit of offense, I guess. Let's listen when they're out of power and when there's no implications. We see this every time. When there's not a Democrat in the White House, when Democrats don't have the chambers of Congress, what do we see? A lot of big, bold speechifying from the progressives in Congress who talk about, we, want, we need a minimum wage, we need a Medicare for all, uh, we need to fight, it's all Trump's fault, it's all the Republicans' fault. Then the second, there's no, account, there's no way to offshore blame on the Republican Party. Have you heard a peep from any of those progressives about any of those issues that they said were life and death issues when Trump was in office? Have you seen AOC crying at the border well, wall? I don't think he said it was a Biden progressive was in and that he agrees with every single Biden or uh, uh, Bernie policy under the sun, just that Bernie was mistreated by the process. Right. Now it's wrong. Right. And there were stakes to making that kind of a claim in prior election cycles. There's no stakes for anyone but him to make. So I, I take Bree's, uh, I take uh, uh, Bree's point, and maybe I'll show you Marianne Williamson's uh, tweet later, um, where she's complaining about <laughs> being invisible. So maybe I'll, I'll bring up the tweet uh, later, but let's get back to, uh, oh, one of the videos I wanted to show you, um, since I'm here on, on Twitter, before I go, um, since I'm here on YouTube, before I go back to Twitter, um, I wanted to show a couple of other videos with uh, Dr. Jill Stein. Um, here is one I wanted to show because evidently or obviously not evidently obviously they're going to come after her again that she's a spoiler since she's entering the race so I think it's um just fitting to 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 have her address this again and she recently addressed it with uh Forbes magazine I believe you told oh, no, Time actually, magazine recently not this one with Forbes magazine I believe and it's uh this one right here. Yeah, Forbes. So she went on Forbes to do an interview as the campaign manager for Cornell in West. In 2000 and, she and was in 2016, the Green Party was accused of uh, tipping the scales in the election to... Give it a second. It'll catch up. Republicans. So first, what's your response when people say to you, 
you know, assign some responsibility to you for Hillary Clinton's loss. Do you hold any of that responsibility? Absolutely not. And I think the notion that votes belong to the political parties because, you know, because of what? Just because they happen to be the, um, you know, the elephant in the room, you know, so they own our votes. You know, we have to justify as voters. I think voter shaming is uh, dead wrong and it's extremely counterproductive. And I think voters really resent being told how they have to vote. Democrats and Republicans and Greens, everybody has to earn our votes. Nobody owns our votes. That's just antithetical to the basic idea of democracy. Now, if you just look at the numbers themselves, exit polls were very clear in 2016 that Green voters, people who voted Green, largely would not have come out to vote had um, had myself and Ajamu Baraka not been there as an option. So this is what you would call cherry picking the data. You know, it's pure cherry picking when people try to make uh, these voter shaming arguments or uh, try to blame 2016 or even uh, 2000 on third parties. Uh, third party votes in 2016 amounted to something like 1.4 million. Uh, if you look at libertarian votes, they were somewhere around three and a half million. And if you were arbitrarily assigning all those libertarian votes to a Republican, if there was a consistent uh, analysis applied here, then Trump's victory would have been even bigger. So it's just laughable. I think that power tries to concoct this, um, this very uh, shady, ridiculous argument uh, in order to try to shame its competition and to basically eliminate its competition. Democracy has to be about a competition of political ideas. That's what. Competition of political ideas. I wanted to play that because inevitably, inevitably she will be, uh, Asked this question over and over, and I wonder how this is going to play out because you have RFK Jr., who really, depending on what poll is, he could take some from Joe Biden, he could take from Donald Trump, and maybe it's just an even taken from even. And then you toss in uh, Dr. Jill Stein, who will bring in new voters, and RFK Jr., I believe, he will also bring in new voters, people who wouldn't normally vote. Um, so this is going to be a, uh, very, very interesting, uh, election. Let's go back to Twitter now. So let's read. It's a threat. <laughs> uh, it's a threat. So Trump is further ahead in the Republican field than Biden is in the Democratic. Nikki Haley is lower in the polls than I am, yet she is not called a long shot every time her name is mentioned. Why? Because she's one of the clubs. While I disagree with her politics, I like her, by the way. The person, the, the, the unhinged warmonger, she likes, by the way, but she continues. The political media elite manufactures derision, derision as well as consent ensuring to the best of their ability that no one is considered qualified for higher office except those who are training is whose training is in maintaining and perpetuating the system as it is the qualification most needed at this time is not the ability to drive car the car that drove us into the ditch it's the ability to drive us out of the ditch the problem is not that we lack political car mechanics. The problem is that we are on the wrong road. The political media industrial complex does not want any one platform in this contest who is willing to say that because when people actually hear it, the gig is up. I see it every day. What people see versus what the system does not want them to see I'm telling you, people are seeing it any way. This is her rant 
for not getting the same exposure that other candidates get who are in worse positions than she are is. And it's because <laughs> no one takes you seriously because you're not a serious uh, candidate. I mean, you've you've adjusted your political beliefs based on bad interviews given Palestine is one you try to adjust. And now you're real silent on Palestine trying to position yourself as one of those, uh, you know, like a Rashida Tlaib. I wonder how she calls for a ceasefire though. I wonder how she calls. But anyway, back to the main part of the story. This is just part of the story I wanted to include was this part here. So let's, let's go back to the, item here was there one more that i missed i got i think i covered it all um let's just look and see if there's any latest news since this just dropped on jill stein before we close this segment here we go this is a new one i want to speak to the massacre now taking place before our eyes in gaza we call for an investigation of Netanyahu's regime's war crimes as well as the role Biden and U.S. leaders is aiding and abetting them. And all above and above all, these crimes must stop. So this is her video now on what's happening in Gaza. Let's I want listen. to speak to the massacre now taking place before our eyes in Gaza. I speak as someone who deplores violence in all its forms and condemns violence against civilians of any nation. The war crimes being perpetrated by Netanyahu against Palestinians, however, are in a league of their own and have reached genocidal proportions with Palestinians denied food, water, medicine, and electricity while being relentlessly bombed as they're forced to flee their homes running for their lives. President Biden and bipartisan leaders are not only complicit, they are full partners in Netanyahu's war crimes, supplying the bombs raining down on Gaza, the airplanes dropping them, the aircraft carriers defending the Israeli military, $10 million a day to strengthen the IDF, and propaganda to run political interference. The US role in blocking a UN ceasefire resolution is absolutely unforgivable. We call for an investigation of the Netanyahu regime's war crimes, as well as the role of Biden and US leaders in aiding and abetting them. And above all, these crimes must stop now. As a Jew who grew up just after the Holocaust with relatives who fled pogroms and a grandfather named Israel, I take never- You know, my mom always told me <laughs> things happen for a reason and Cornell West announces Peter Dow as his campaign manager I'm sorry let me back up Cornell West goes on Jimmy Dore show and becomes an advocate for lesser two evil Cornell West then hires Peter Dow Peter Dow runs the Cornell West campaign into a delusional crash. Jill Stein takes over as the candidate running the Green Party. Jill Stein is Jewish. And what is the top story that's going on right now and will be going on for the foreseeable future? The war with Israel. Now, what sort of gravity... Does a Jewish person have speaking against the atrocities of Israel? So it almost makes her as a candidate better positioned specifically for what's happening right now. Things happen for a reason, like my mom always says. So this could be a gift, actually, that... Uh, Cornel West's jazz man trait of ad-libbing and doing, making crazy ass, stupid ass decisions got him out of this candidacy and got this person a better 
positioned person specifically because she's Jewish and listen to what she says about her Jewish heritage. For their lives, President Biden and bipartisan leaders are not only complicit, they are full partners in Netanyahu's war crimes, supplying the bombs raining down on Gaza, the airplanes dropping them, the aircraft carriers defending the Israeli military, $10 million a day to strengthen the IDF, and propaganda to run political interference. The U.S. role in blocking a U.N. ceasefire resolution is absolutely unforgivable. We call for an investigation of the Netanyahu regime's war crimes, as well as the role of Biden and U.S. leaders in aiding and abetting them. And above all, these crimes must stop now. As a Jew who grew up just after the Holocaust, with relatives who fled pogroms and a grandfather named Israel, I take never again seriously, and that means never again for anyone. For all those reasons, we demand a ceasefire. She has a grandfather named Israel. She grew up right after the Holocaust. Things happen for a reason. A ceasefire, an end to the blockade, humanitarian and medical relief, release of hostages and political prisoners, and an end to occupation and apartheid. This is the only path to peace and security for us all. That's Dr. Jill Stein, everybody. Let's see what else. This is why I, I searched the latest. And thank you, Nick, posting another one. Dr. Jill Stein has announced she's running for president in 2024. Remember when Stein ran and got 7%? Then the establishment freaked out, Russia gated her, and began their smear campaign against third parties. The multi-party era is upon us. And that's the, you can see the um, receipt here, that picture, CNN. ORC poll, Stein gets 7% amongst registered voters. So thank you, Nick, for that receipt. Let's see. We got that one. That's Peter Dow. The, 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 man, that's a piece of shit. Dr. Jill Stein announced her campaign on X less than an hour ago, and the st uh, still with her shit lives already melting down let me let me let me see nick uh still with her yeah yeah the hashtag is back everybody because of jill stein the hashtag is back 